Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. So much anger. Ah. I'm Rex. I'm Daniel. This is the, the surly man, Dan. And what's funny is this is the Preacher's Pardon bourbon. Yeah. But I've been watching this show Preacher? online. Preacher. Right. And that's all I can think of when I see this cover. I haven't, I haven't seen it. I've seen it pop up. Yeah. But I haven't watched it. Oh, it's... It. I like it. You like it? It's weirdly dark. Okay. But I find it entertaining. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay, this is a gift from Matt Roth. Matt Roth, you magnificent bastard. I went with like the weird hand thing this time. <laughs> I think it worked. Oh, how grandly he preached perfection. Yes. Preacher's Pardon Bourbon, Kentucky Whiskey, 8-year-old, 45% So, here's the thing about This is a California company called Frank Lynn. Okay. And what they do is they source bourbon from Kentucky. Sure. Among other places. And uh, specialize in providing spirits for all of these private, random, weird labels uh, that aren't actually distilleries. Okay. So, right? they're a sourcing company in a... And a then they four other brands. Like, no. oh, if you want to you want to come up with a whiskey brand, we'll do it for you. Now, are they... Just putting it straight into bottles, or are they no, just aging putting it, it longer? In a nope, just straight into bottles. Putting and putting it straight in a bottle. Okay. Now they also are a distri I mean, they're a distributor. Sorry, they help distribute all of these things, and they help are part of making them. It's distributed by, and they're a part of helping make them come into creation. Now can you? Now they work with different people to bottle. Hold on, hold on. Hmm. Now can you do that though? Can can distributors partake in the actual creating and bottling of? No, they have other people doing those things, and then they'll take all of that. So you're basically they're going, hey, we want to distribute this whiskey, okay, right? And I'm I'm guessing I just know that this is true on a couple of the brands. Right. There's probably other brands in our portfolio that are totally different. Okay, but uh, I know some distributors that say, look, we really want to distribute a kick-ass bourbon in our portfolio. Sure. Instead of finding a brand who's trying to become a brand, right. they reach out to a distillery and say, hey, would you create a brand for us that only we can distribute, okay, or that we can distribute. Fair enough. Right? Now, they this company also yes. handles Medley. Medley Bourbon. Remember Medley Brothers? I we do. reviewed it. Yeah. And the 12-year-old Old Medley, and then also so, um, Wathen Single Barrel. This is, a single barrel. this is a pretty obscure thing, mm -hmm. but we're going to compare it to something. We're going to compare it to... Things you can actually get. Yeah, we're just going to compare it to the Old Medley. Okay. Now, this does have... 12-year-old Old Medley, Kentucky Straight Bourbon. Does have distribution. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Same distributor. Okay. Same distributor. Okay, so this is in there. I don't know what the mash bill is. Well, I don't know. And I think if somebody's going to the trouble to source from Kentucky, they're not gonna want anything weird or unique. They no. just want when to deliver right over home plate. That and that's, that's what it is on the nose. Yeah, on the nose, it's just really nice, kind of rich. Now, yeah. I didn't have an age statement, There's but that. um I've read different people said it's some oh there it is, no. It was on the other bottle that I've aged in. It's eight years. Yep. Eight years old. And then there's that uh, that sweet wood. That sweet bourbony wood. Oh, it's got a little bit of a yeah. spice to it. Yeah. It's uh, 45%. Like some basic baking spice and brown sugar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All spice and a little bit of the barrel tannin. My jaw is still curling a little bit right now. Really? Yeah. Like okay. it went... <laughs> <laughs> it's only 45% if I remember. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, how could it go wrong? It's little, an eight-year-old Kentucky bourbon. <laughs> tiniest, tiniest bit of a floral and then a caramel on that. Finish. Okay, there's not a lot to say about it because just it's just a really good eight-year-old Kentucky bourbon. Now comparing it right? to the old medley. Now I don't know who's making it. Nobody knows. That's more pre but preacher. This is oh, <laughs> it's I forgot to open the other one. These are That's very far, similar. They're very very similar. Huh. I don't know how they're different. This is the 12 year old medley, so it's four years older. Yeah. But it's made by the same people, and what? this one you can actually get. Now, made by the same people or distributed by the same people? Distributed by the same people. Okay. This is a Charles Medley product. Okay. And they have a hand, and uh, I don't even know who's making theirs for them anymore. Okay. Like there was. Um, but it's, it's, it's Kentucky. Technically, could, yeah, technically they could have it done by anybody mm -hmm. who makes the whiskey according to their specifications. Yeah. Yeah, just. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, Same thing, right? It's, it's like, hey, classic let's drive as hard and as fast and as straight to Kentucky bourbon as we possibly can. And this on the... Oh, there's way more subtlety to this one. It's a little lower proof only by two, or not even two. Okay. Um, so it's 43 and change. 43 and change. But it doesn't have that same J-hook of a... This is uh, a lot more rounded and buttery. 
Yeah, it does feel up. It feel like it has more of a, a full body, almost a popcorn kind of vibe going on. Mm. Like buttered movie. You're popcorn. gonna have to explain that. But it feels like it has much more of a full body. I'm getting more tannins from the wood, getting a little less brown more sugar. More tannins? I'm getting less. No, no, no. I'm getting more tannin. That full body of flavors includes more. No, there's more. There's more tannin comparatively in the preacher. No. There's more. Did you get these backwards? No, I did not. <laughs> we, you can, <laughs> dude, come on. No. What I mean that, is that um, dry. Oh, it's right there. The I'm rounds. Not even, no. The rounds halfway uh, through this dry uh, oakiness, and then you have like some sweet tea from uh, from you know the traditional bourbon notes. I'm getting more of the rounded feeling of the oil from overly buttered movie popcorn. That like yeah. kind of greasy mouth feel. Oh, it's, mm -hmm. it's it's definitely oilier, oilier, but yeah, no, you're so. Think you should. I'm gonna uh, say I actually should hang your head in shame. I actually prefer. You need punishment. Um, you need punishment. Uh, okay, <laughs> it's not the. Uh, it's not tannin. Tannin is the wrong word. It's um. It's a little bit. Think like this. It's like grain bitter. <laughs> Great. So, oh, you're saying? Yeah, I'm saying there's a bitterness, but it's not the tannins. That's my point. The bitter, there is a bitterness to that that old medley, but I don't think it's wood tannin bitter. I, it feels more if like yeah. gra like grainy. That's a long walk around the park to not agree with my assessment of no, these no, no. tannins. No, no, no. Because just, to me, what it's I, the obvious source of the tannins, it's the oakiness. Not necessarily. That's what I'm saying. In my brain, it's getting the, the uh, when I get to bourbon, I get this dusty corn note. And this is taking that dusty, dried corn note to a really, really extreme level. Like you're stuck in a grain bin and the dust is like drying out in your mouth and nose. No, I will say this. On a lot of whiskeys, you start to acclimate to the sweetness mm -hmm. and you're finding other stuff there. I'm starting to acclimate to the tannins, regardless of where the source of the tannins is. I'm starting to acclimate to that bit a little bit more. Or let's just say the, you're acclimating to the dry bitterness. The dry bitterness. And I'm finding more in the sweetness now. Mm -hmm. I'm getting a little bit more of a caramel. And I'm not getting cherry, which I often find. See, of these two, I much prefer the Preacher's Pardon. Because it's got a little more spike, pepper, and drama. I'm gonna really? look up a price really quick. Uh, first approach, Preacher's Pardon. But after you live with this for a few sips, I think the old medley gets more interesting. Oh, I agree that this gets better yeah. as it opens up. But I still prefer the I experience think where everything of eventually, Preacher's Pardon. Where everything eventually lands, I'm landing on the old medley. You're landing on the Looks Preacher's like Pardon. Preacher's Pardon is loading. Andrew Brown. Dudes. Caesar crossed the Rubicon. Is that... <laughs> it wasn't George Washington. <laughs> There's there no Rubicon up there? No. There's no Rubicon? Keep reading. It's, the, it's in northern Italy, and he was coming back to Rome from Gaul with his army, which was illegal. You know, you got an army, you don't really have to worry about the legalities of stuff like that. They told him if he crossed the Rubicon, it would be considered an act of war. Legend has it he crossed the Rubicon with his army, stating, Alia iacta est, which is Latin for... The die is cast. Which is sort of like Ali Ali Oxen Free. He then proceeded, yeah, that's it's factual <laughs> and researched, is what he just said. Yeah. He then proceeded to trounce the Senate and take command as Emperor of Rome. Sorry, took four years of Latin in high school. Washington crossed the Delaware. Mm hmm. Maybe your Delaware. <laughs> <laughs> now here's my favorite thing. But that both are iconic river crossings. All right. Everybody else has followed up though. Read the other two comments because now this has become a thing in the comment section, and it's one of my favorite comment sections <laughs> we've had in a while. Right. I've uh, been laughing for like an hour reading through the comments on this one. The people giving. There's like 20 people who've done some version of that. Captain and Nizzle. Someone paint a picture of Roger Rex crossing the Rubicon dressed as a Civil War soldier while being bombed by a B-52. <laughs> yeah. That'd be pretty good. Yeah. Uh, Gary Ferguson, and thus Washington said, the die is cast, <laughs> and set forth to lay siege to Pompeii and the Caput Mundi. Many years later, Caesar completed his invasion of Britain at the Battle of Yorktown. <laughs> Whiskey history. Yes! <laughs> Come on, that's maybe my favorite thing. There are several people who came up with, here's the real history, and they mix like no, 18 no, 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 things no. Whiskey, together. Whiskey history is the best history. Yeah. By far. <laughs> <laughs> so, take away on this one, what's your preferred? Yeah, it, it eventually becomes the old medley. Starts really? out with the preacher's pardon. Eventually, I like the old medley better. Okay. 
Yeah. Fair enough. I'm going back to Preacher Spartan. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may you fight for friends. If you steal, may you steal lovers' hearts. And if you drink, may you drink with us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw on a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.